good vibrations. All right, well, today we are going deeper than Jacques Cousteau on a particularly adventurous day. We've got two guests who do like to go deep. First off, returning to the show, I've had him on a couple of times before. We're going back a few years, but it's Mr. Astrotheology himself, Santos Bernacci. Very warm welcome back to the show, brother. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be back. I think this is our third stint together. Yes, I think it is. I think we spoke about uh, astrotheology the first time. We spoke about the cosmology of the Earth on which we live the second time. That one yep. put a cat among the pigeons, I tell you. <laughs> I love it. That's what I like to do. That's yep. why I'm here. I love doing that. <laughs> that rattled a few <laughs> cages, I can tell you. I think that was about four or five years ago and you know, discussion of that subject was not as advanced back then as it is now. And so it really did polarize people and it really did upset certain individuals. But there you go. There's a word for it in the Hopi language about the provokers in the community. They've got a job to do that, to uh, inspire people to think by, you know, um, various devices and techniques and mechanisms to, um, you know, shape their yeah, their delusions, I guess. I don't know how to put it, but <laughs> to shake them out of them and, and bring them to their senses. So uh, I always have been like that. Even when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I used to love, you know, getting getting the point across and, and well, you know, I defended Christianity quite well as Jehovah's Witness, and I'm glad because I still do. Mm. I only know how to do it better now and correctly. So in both systems, when I was you could say, semi-awakened as Jehovah's Witness and now fully awakened, I still um, love to get people to think on spiritual lines and transcendental and and everything like this so that you, know, you can get out of the mundane, boring, limited, conditioned way of thinking and seeing things and, and to expand your, your consciousness and really um, optimise your, your brain's capacity. That's what I like to do, you know, help people to wake up from their delusions, whether it's a little jab about chemtrails or about fluoride in the water. I just like to let people know that there is always a differing opinion from what the government's uh, trying to tell us. I've never liked the misuse of power by government. Never. I've just never liked it. Hmm. In the words of Malcolm X, it's getting the truth out by any means necessary, whatever it takes. Yeah, I use various devices. I use, you know, kindness, loving, sweetness, and I use rationale. I use um, sometimes provocation. Uh, I use a little bit of uh, everything. A uh, bit of vitriol here and there. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I throw a little funny thing in, you know, like um, yesterday I was filming the... Uh, live Guadalupe, the shrine of Guadalupe. I'm in Mexico and we did a live from there. And as we entered one of the Jesuit um, churches to the left, there was a picture of the Pope, you know, and I just said, oh, there he is, Popey Poo. And, <laughs> and so... Did that go down uh, well? You know, these are all the devices you've got to use. If you haven't got a lot of tricks when you're teaching... Not I hear you talking about teach. pig bum uh, a lot and how pilots yeah, eat pig bum. Exactly. There you go. There's one of mine. Yeah. That's one of mine. It yeah, sure that's is. that's one of my devices. Yeah. For sure. No one else does that one. That's right. So you're in Mexico at the moment and you've just been visiting uh, our other guest on the show who's been on a few times as well. I just completed another instalment of the Truth Trip Sound Clash with him. This guy really knows how to dissect and take apart rock songs, classic rock records, and really get inside what was on the mind and in the consciousness of the musicians. He's a master at that. It's that weird guy from Mexico. That's his own <laughs> words. The return of Charlie Freak. Welcome back, brother. <laughs> Uh, wonderful to be back, and uh, and again to to have the three amigos together is is pretty special. To to have Santos with us today, Mark, uh, this this is great. So this is what the Truth Community is all about, and I'm just uh, thrilled to be part of it. And I'll just quickly let everybody know that while uh, Santos and I were here and on uh, the podcast that we just did on his uh, radio show. Uh, we were dissecting the Led Zeppelin song Stairway to Heaven and just awesome. showing you the beautiful, perfect truth about that one story that is in all of these songs. That's right. That's definitely one that takes some dissecting. So the reason I wanted to get you guys together today is to talk about the topic of veganism. It's one of those hot potatoes, excuse the pun. <laughs> And there seems to be a trend emerging out of that whole thing that I've identified of 
people that have tried pursuing a vegan diet, so they're truthers, they're individuals who claim that they wanted to become vegan out of compassion towards animals. They wanted to take that empathetic path. But this big trend that's been occurring is many of these people have been turning their back on this lifestyle and going back to consuming animal products after, as they put it, running into a whole bunch of health problems that they attribute to the diet. I mean, it used to be you'd hear one or two people complaining about this, but there's a whole load of personal associates of mine in the last few weeks that have all been saying the same thing. They've said it didn't work out. I got very, very sick. And the minute I went back into eating meat and animal products, my health returned and uh, I got back to where I need to be. So I want to know what's going on here. I want to know what these people might be doing wrong from a practical nutritional point of view. And I'm also happy to get into the spiritual and metaphysical implications of not eating an animal product diet. I've got to say that uh, I myself have been vegetarian for 32 years and I've been more or less vegan for the last six. And I say more or less because I'm going to get this out there as a sort of caveat early on before anyone else brings it up. I just mentioned to you guys off air, every now and again, over the course of the last six years, I have taken the odd amount of cheese. When I've been travelling and there's been not many options to eat, I've had something like a pizza with some cheese on it. So I've not been 100% vegan, but for the most part I have been. My health is absolutely fine. I've had no issues whatsoever. Uh, Certain people I've been in correspondence with have tried to attribute my good health to the fact that I have a bit of cheese every three or four months. So that seems to be all you need to stay healthy. (laughs) But, you know, all I can come at this from is my personal perspective of being in fine health and having no dietary issues whatsoever. So it seems either a vegan diet works for certain people and not for others, or the people that claim they're getting ill from it are doing something wrong. So let me bat that across to to you two and get your take on that. And in due course, I just want to mention to you some of the comments that come up time and time again from these people, uh, some of the arguments that they make, and I'll get your take on those as well. Uh, Santos, would you like to start? Okay. So as for the people who jump off the vegan uh, train, uh, so to speak, uh, there are, there will be many reasons why they do that, right? And and uh, and many reasons why they uh, got sick. There's not just one. There's many reasons. <clears throat> now, uh, one of the things I would suggest to look at and consider is parasites. Parasites. Uh, most of the parasites love flesh because it putrefies in the GI tract and and the the GI tract has no way of digesting it. It's impossible. So um, what's happening is uh, the parasites are eating all that and then pooing. And I don't know, I guess they're probably getting nutrients from the poo. Who, do, who knows how they're getting uh, nutrients from flesh because it simply does not digest, which is what solid food should do. It should not ferment and it should not putrefy. Uh, well, fermentation helps. Uh, and fermented things, but um, putrefaction is out of the question, and that's what flesh does. So uh, another reason is some of these people are very, very material-based people. You know, they're not at all uh, transcendentalizing. They're in their gross mind. They have not even contemplated that they have a, a subtle mind, the higher mind. And the gross mind wants what the parasites want. The parasites in their body are telling them, I want flesh and I will feel good because they're used to the poo, the the toxins of the parasites. This is why when you see people who eat flesh, they've got these big fat guts. That's not muscle. That's not anything tissue. That is parasites. It's a colony of parasites and worms and all sorts of demonic entities feasting on putrefying, rotting corpse corpse eaters you are what you eat what are you a corpse that's why you're a corpseration and you believe it that's how they get you to do it eat corpses and then become a uh, citizen of a corpseration and die and and your name shall not be in the book of life yep uh, other reasons is people are addicted to blood there's always blood dripping in the flesh the 
carcass that they are devouring. They are blood-addicted, lustful gluttons, and gluttons do not inherit God's kingdom. This is why it's so important not to put blood in your diet. Thank you, Dr. Sebi. So there are other, other reasons as well. People are descending. They are practicing gross sex. They are practicing gross everything, nothing subtle. Therefore, they need flesh because you know, murdering uh, makes them aggravated. It gives them that aggravated energy of death. And so they play out all their fantasies of ejaculatory sex and blood gluttonous eating and all kinds of murderous ways. Hence, they are the ugliest, the smelliest of all the people, the carnivores. They're ugly. You won't see a good-looking one. You will not. <laughs> uh, they've got a lot of wrinkles. Uh, me at uh, 47 in a couple of weeks, not a wrinkle on my face. Thank you very much. And that's because of my vegan diet. Even when I was a bum eater, I would have very lean meat and mostly flesh, uh, a fish. I uh, never liked red meat and I didn't trust sausages with all that fat and veins and sinewy brain matter that they put in there. Ugh, how disgusting. They should have on the menu, uh, cow's bum, fish bum, chicken bum, rabbit bum, horse bum. They have to dress meat before it goes into supermarkets and, and other shops because the state that it comes out of slaughterhouses in is absolutely horrific and nobody would want to eat that. So, you know, they bleach it, they dye it, they uh, yep. fragrance it to get rid of the smell of death. They do all mm -hmm. this stuff before it's considered in any kind of fit state for people to want to buy it. Mm -hmm. and, and just to quickly interject here, we'll get back to Santos, but um, one of the reasons that, that they bleach uh, the meat delivered um, that's going to supermarkets is they want to ensure that there are no uh, worms to uh, trying to escape out of the meat that are visible to the human eye. It's, it's another one of the reasons. So, you know, when you, you say, well, I've done the worm test when I brought it home. Yeah, because of the processes that Mark's talking about, about dressing death before you get it and what you're getting is not what is happening right after the slaughter it's disgusting sorry about that guys back to santos yeah no worries yep. santos finish off yep life begets life death begets death that's why people who eat flesh look like they are death warmed up they don't look good they look toxic. They, their body is in shock. It's paralyzed. Their intestines cannot absorb this this flesh. It, it doesn't know what to do with it. It just it, and that's why the parasites are in there. You know, just uh, breaking it down, and they're having a feast. And the parasite colonies grow and grow and grow. All you have to do is look at YouTube videos of people having their intestines opened, and all the uh, worms that come out. Or, and that's what the fat belly is, with all these uh, flesh eaters. So. As long as there are abattoirs, there will be battlefields. Thank you, Leo Tolstoy, great genius of the 1800s. So this is why uh, death is happening on the battlefields. There's no vegetarians. There are no vegetarians on the battlefield and, and in, in uh, mercenary uh, armies. That's what they are these days, mercenary soldiers. Um, there are no vegans there at all as well because they've understood that you do not kill. And that's that. You, you, you don't kill. In the Buddhist system, if you kill a fly, let alone eat it, you will perish in hell. And in Bhagavad Gita, it says if you eat flesh of animals, you will reincarnate as an animal. You will be eaten. You'll be slaughtered and eaten to experience what you put that animal through. You cannot escape this. What about uh, in the Buddhist tradition that you mentioned there? You tread on an ant. You don't mean to, but you kill it. I mean, what are the repercussions there in that tradition? Well, this is different because there is. it's all about intent. It's all about intent, it's, right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, bacteria, which are animals and small microorganisms in your body, uh, you know, they, they get killed by your actions. You know, if you uh, drink a lot of alcohol, a lot of them perish in the GI tract and, and you know, they... Uh, it, it, wreaks havoc and so but you didn't set out with the intent to cause death to another that's creature right. Mm. that's right it's all about the intent you know thou shalt not kill and so why would you have to kill an animal when you can get per 100 calories twice as much from broccoli than red meat twice as much twice as twice and a little bit more i think it's uh 12 
calories, 12.5 calories uh, uh, protein of protein per 100 calories for broccoli and about 6.2 for red meat. You, you know, you don't have to see, you don't have to cut the throat of the broccoli. It doesn't have a face. It's not screaming. Um, people will argue that, you know, they'll say, oh, yes, the vegetables are going to do this. this well, is- well, they certainly will. And that's one of the comments I want to throw in there in due course <laughs> to get the take of both of you on that. When people say plants suffer too, uh, we'll address that in due course. You know, another great quote, as well as that Leo Tolstoy one, actually came from Paul McCartney or whoever he may be, where he said, <laughs> if slaughterhouses had glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. Uh, it's probably an appropriate point to go over to Charlie and see what he wants to add there. Paul McCartney. Well, yeah, wh- whoever he may be, that's another show. <laughs> well, you know, let's... Um, uh, there, all of this stuff is just is so simple and straightforward. It, it really is. And, but you have to start from a point of truth. So uh, Santos and I talk all the time about um, the, the, the truth of everything, of course, is syncretism. This is the leading to, to the oneness, the one. And the one is ultimately is the monadic point or the monadic circle. For all those people that may have not taken part in meditation, that's that little dot that is surrounded by a circle. You stare at it and it helps you to transcend from the physical into the metaphysical. And what what you're seeing in that single point is, is everything and nothing. It's all things. And that's where we have to start. We have to start at the very, very center. So what what is a human being? And in this physical realm, we have to look around us to be able to, to fully understand what the heck it is that we are. So when you begin to look around, you see that there are carnivores, there, there, there are. And you see that there are omnivores, there are. And you see that there are herbivores, and there are. And then you see that there are frugivores. And when you begin to do your own research, okay, that's the, all it takes, you begin to do your own research on what these things are, what they look like, and what they do, um, then you're able to make a very clear-cut uh, decision as to what you are. And once you understand what it is that you are in this physical realm, everything else actually becomes quite quite easy, doesn't it? Because you have to start from a single point. You have to start from a, uh, a point of inner standing, the monadic point. So what is, what is a frugivore or a frugivore? Primarily eats fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains. Has prehensile hands and feet. Small to medium mouth openings. Small canines for defense. Flat, blunt incisors. Flattened molars. Great lateral and forward jaw mobility. No shear in their jaw. They chew their food. They have large salivary glands. Alkaline saliva with pelatine. Alkaline urine. Weak hydrochloric stomach acid. Ooh, that's a big giveaway. Uh, I'll say a dead giveaway. Needs fiber in diet, has a smooth tongue, met- metabolizes small amounts of cholesterol, uh, sweat glands in the whole of the body. Intestine uh, system is nine times the length of the body. Colon is long, looping, and acidic. Cannot metabolize cellulose. Digest and takes about 12 to 18 hours. Has full color vision. They suck water to drink it and will salivate over fruit. Now, what is a human? Exactly that. Now, this isn't me attempting to uh, juxtapose my belief structure. I don't have beliefs. Like Santos, I don't have beliefs. I have knowingness. The things that I was taught in my life, I've thrown out. Because you have to start, again, from this point of inner standing. We have been lied to about everything. And the simplest, fastest way, if you want to change your existence and reality and get healthy overnight, both of body and mind, then it starts by inner standing that there is a tiny group that chooses and wants at uh, all costs to rule over you. Therefore, they lie about everything. Everything that you have been taught formally or informally via an organized system or the entertainment system is a lie from organized society, is a lie 
because this is a game of life and death for them. They are the few and they are ruling over the vast, vast majority. So they lie about everything. If you're not at that point yet, right? I, I, that was how I started on, on the YouTube channel. My first series that featured, uh, you know, Mark was everything you know is a lie. And, and I meant everything. And at the time, no one was saying that. And so what you get now with with a lot of these wonderful, great truthers are all about the truth is that, yeah, oh, yeah, everything is a lie. Yeah, except, of course, the globe is round and tilting and spinning and wobbling and going out of control. And although water, you know, doesn't curve and stick to a ball. But of course, that's that's the truth. I mean, we all know that. I mean, come on. They lie to us about everything, but they decided to tell us the truth about this one thing. Exactly. So if you want to know, if you want to know what it is that you're supposed to eat, do the opposite of what you're taught from birth, right? Do the opposite. What you see on the school walls, these food pyramids is tantamount to the worst crimes against humanity, against all sentient beings. These are crimes of mass destruction are these food pyramids on the wall because they're absolutely a lie. They're absolutely upside down. They're a complete lie. And they are forcing you to become a beast. So very simply, what I read to you is a frugivore. Very simply, what I read to you is a human being. There is no opinion in this. I didn't give you one ounce of an opinion. Everything that I stated to you about the frugivore is exactly what the human being is. So there's a great two great points of reference. One, we are frugivores. Everything becomes easy after that. Two, we are ruled over by a tiny group that wants total control. We are their uh, victim slaves. They don't lock us in prisons. They don't have to. They put us in prisons of our mind because 99.9% of all human beings do not exist out of knowingness, knowing absolute through experience and testing, 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 and proving to themselves absolute truth. No, they have a belief system. And when you have a belief system, you're a slave. And inside of you, I'll guarantee you, they have the number one uh, prison warden of all time. And that is the ego. And you can literally look at the ego as a tapeworm because in the physical form, that's exactly what it manifests itself from the metaphysical plane to the material plane. That's what the ego manifests itself to is the tapeworm. And that's why you hear all the time, Mark, all of these friends of yours and and nonstop people within the, the truth community that are saying, Boy, the moment that that I let go of that vegan diet and I went back to meat, dairy and eggs, oh, I felt so much better. That's right, because the moment you attempt to take power back, the tapeworm of organized society, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, the control mechanism that rules over you, they fight back because they don't play fair and they put the screws to you. And the tapeworm that's inside of you is doing the same thing. And when you finally give in, then it, it stops tightening the screws on you and it lets go again and you start to feel better. The f- biggest thing that people are feeling when they when they begin to wean themselves off of meat, dairy, and eggs is a healing crisis. And you have polluted yourself since birth. Every single freaking um, solar day from birth, you have been polluting yourself. And somehow we still live to 70, 80 years of, of age. That's that's incredible. We should be living for thousands of years. And that's not a grandiose statement. That's a point of fact. If we're poisoning ourselves with the most horrific things like vaccine, vaccines to newborn babies, and we're still living to 70 or 80 years, it, a thousand years is the easiest thing in the world. So it all starts with knowing this. Everything they tell you is a lie and we are frugivores. And when you understand that, here's the first thing you learn about a frugivore. They require an alkaline body and an alkaline mind. And when you look at what alkalinity is, this is so key because there's only two things in in this entire world. It's redshift 
or blue shift to be able to achieve green shift. Green shift is in the middle is the balance. So above or below that center line, that middle point of balance, harmony, peace, which we're all attempting to achieve, green shift, which is, you know, the the earth plane of uh, the great mother, it's, it's, this is the green shift. Earth is green. And above, look at the sky, it's blue. Below, dig up the ground and you're gonna see, you know, some red rocks, red soil, red shift. Of the material physical plane is red, of the spiritual plane is blue. Blue shift, red shift, you choose. And that allegory, that analogy applies to everything. So in life, in the physical form, you're either living or dying and you choose. Alkalinity is life, acidity is death. Now. What are meat, dairy, and eggs? Without doubt, they are the most horrific sources of acid. And if you wanna know what acid is, what acid does, do your own experiment. Do your own experiment on any any substance that you possess in your own home, just Grab some, you know, you, you get some from the from a school or a university or even from a, a local chemist or whatever. Just grab a little bit of hydrochloric acid and do some experiments and see what it does to everything that you have in your home. And observe. That's all you have to do. Observe. And then, then you will begin to have some gnosis, G-N-K-N, which is truth. And the truth comes from you getting off your ass and doing some experiments and learning the truth. So when you observe acidity in action, it's death. It kills everything. It breaks everything down. That's not living. That's dying. What does alkalinity do? It preserves. It extends. It gives you the opportunity to do more. Alkalinity isn't necessarily all things. There's something. There's someone who comes later. There's after the baptism of water, there's one who will give you the baptism of fire who comes later. But alkalinity is giving you an opportunity for not just long, but eternal life. But you have to know this stuff. There are always two choices, magnetism uh, or electricity. One has eternal scalar waves. The other has temporal, uh, temporal waves. One is eternal, one is temporary. Again, always it's going back to the singular choice of syncretism. Blue we're, back shift, to, red shift. we're back to Led Zeppelin Stairway to Heaven. Yes, there it are two paths absolutely. you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the path you're on. Brilliant, Mark, because that's exactly brilliant. That's exactly what they were saying in the song. Exactly what they were saying in the song. Always a choice. So... People love to argue about this. You may have noticed. We're back to the ego again. And for people that don't have a large amount of time to invest in research, they're kept busy with, you know, family or jobs or whatever. All they're going to hear is a load of noise going around. Because on one side of the argument, you have people saying, yes, we need meat and animal products because of these vitamins and these nutrients and this protein. And then somebody else will counter it with the exact opposite argument saying, no, 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 we need, we don't need animal products. We need, uh, you know, all the stuff that you've just mentioned there. And it just becomes a cacophony of arguments going back and forth as far as an observer is concerned. So it can become very confusing and uh, it can just melt your brain if you pay attention to all different sides of the argument it's absolutely so santos do you want to take that one first sure yeah there's always um co-opted deliberate agenda um uh inversion of the truth so people can you know uh, promote their agendas i mean going back to going back to the cosmology of the earth that we mentioned earlier uh, as Mm -hmm. as you guys well know you know there's arguments that go on for days and days and days and each side swears they're absolutely right and they've got scientific data to prove it and stuff and nobody ever backs down nobody says you know what you're right i was wrong i see your point of view now never happens Mm -hmm. exactly so yeah that's that's the uh what Thomas H. Burgoyne said, the, the greatest deception of all people do not, do not understand the two truths. Uh, universal absolute truth and the truth of appearances or the truth of uh, the senses or the appearances. So the difference is, is what um, 
br- makes or breaks you in all areas of your of your life to know the truth because you know, here we've been told that uh, corpses can uh, are good for us to eat corpses because we see other animals eating corpses well um, if you really look at the medical literature it's it's the opposite it's they know that uh, it leads to cancer and bowel cancer etc and people who live up to 80 and 90 my father's 87 he's been eating pork all his life and he never will stop eating it uh, he's probably going to reach 90 I guess his fa- uh, father did San- Santo Bonacci uh, same name he lived on 90 years but this this is still this is still the children they're still children we're supposed to live hundreds of years and only vegetarians reach that. Uh, only only uh, non-flesh eating ones will reach that. They they're in their hundreds, and there's people all around the world who are in their hundreds, you know. And they really just only eat uh, vegetables and fruit, and berries and things like that. That's all they eat, and very little. They don't need much. They've transcendentalized and sublimated their bodies by going into the subtle mind you then activate all of that where your body now doesn't need so much gross food. You don't need cheese. This is the the great addiction. A lot of people, they're addicted to cheese because of its its, uh, ability to make you feel full, you know, and... and, Oh, uh, man, yeah, I know that one. I mean, I I lost everything else very easily. I stopped meat with no problem, got rid of the eggs, got rid of the milk, but the cheese, the cheese was difficult for me. I mean, I'm really trying to stay on the path now and not go back onto it the way I have been, but it's a difficult one to lose. It is addictive. Yeah, I wouldn't be... uh, 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 worried if anyone wanted to have milk and cheese that was directly from a loved animal or, or honey, you know, and things like that. I don't, um, although I did have a little bit of honey the other day here and, you know, she told me it was in the drink and I didn't mind. I just said, well, if, as long as it's organic. So, but the thing is, in in the old books, it is fine to have an animal that you can eat from. That's why the Bible says you can eat from the animals, not eat them. You know, these are mistranslations. It's, it's flesh and meat are two different things. You know, the meat is, is more uh, a different, uh, a different concept. It embraces much more. Meat can be what you eat. The word "eat" is in it. Um, you know, and and what you, uh, um, anything that you eat. You see, the material that you eat. That's what meat is. Really, in in syncretism, etymological think. That's how you would see that word, meat, to eat. Uh, And then again, eat is in the middle of the word death. So meat as opposed to flesh, that's another another thing. And this is what the scriptures are talking about. Uh, Some of the Hari Krishna scriptures and books explain this so beautifully about the the different words that were mistranslated to to make people literally think that God is telling us to eat animals when really God is saying do not kill. It's obvious that you shouldn't kill. It's it's something no one likes to slit the throat of a rabbit and then eat it. No one likes to look at a, ca- a calf in, in its eyes while it's crying for its mother and just slit its throat and tongue and just put it on a frying pan while it's kicking and, and bleeding to death and you're, you're frying his tongue. You know, you wouldn't be so gross. That's how other animals eat other animals. Humans are not like this. So that's why they put abattoirs away, away, away from all seeing eyes. They make sure everything is secret and they're hidden. And then they've got these machines that they make, these bloody sharp machines, factory production bloody machines that chickens get hoarded on these conveyor belts and f- through these, you know, battering through these uh, uh, narrow little tunnels in fear of death. Isn't it incredible that there are people who sit around and design these things? They draw up blueprints for the most efficient killing machines and they do that for a living, take a paycheck for it, and they're just fine with it. That's just astounding to me. First class ticket to hell, unescapably for all these murderous, murderous plunderers and exploiters of animals. You will, you will perish in hell. That's where you will go as you exploit animals. Animals are not to be exploited in any way, shape or form. You should not have carcasses in your freezer. This is disgusting. 
We are in the age of Aquarius, 2020 now, people. We're not in the bloody uh, industrial age where all kinds of poor people were were, were forced to, to uh, change their diet by going into the cities and being indoctr- indoctrinated by the Jesuits, the bloodiest of all of them, because they are the ones who introduced ejaculation and flesh eating into the world. In one way, you... Uh, in in one end of your organism, you eat death, and at the other end, you ejaculate yourself to death. I know that on Charlie's site, Freak Sense TV, he's talked about this process of internalizing ejaculation and all this stuff. So if this is new to anyone listening and they're like, what the hell are these guys talking about? You might <laughs> want to go and check out some of the videos on those two sites to really get inside that subject area. But we've kind of come back around now to the main talking point, which is vegan diets and what people may or may not be doing wrong. And I just wanted to share with you uh, some regular comments that I've seen people post, people who say they've tried a vegan diet, didn't work out for them. They often complain of losing energy and they say they were physically and mentally weak as a result of not taking animal products. A very common one is people complaining about brain fog. They say they can't think straight, they can't hold a thought and they say they were always hungry. And they say they wake up in the morning and they're pissed off and snappy and angry because they're so hungry. So, Charlie, maybe you want to take those and address what may be happening when people complain of these things, because they're very quick to state that it's all as a result of not eating animal products. And they say the minute they do, all those things disappear. So what could be going on here? Uh, again, it's it's very, very simple. And, you know, while the things that Santos was talking about for, for many of the listeners may seem a bit off topic or like you were saying, Mark, some heady stuff, you need to understand that it, this is this is the truth and the truth connects all things. The truth is holistic. What organized society sells is bits and pieces and bits and pieces are, are lies because they don't fit together. The truth is holistic. It explains all things. Just just like when when I try and you know uh, take apart a song and explain the the highest possible meaning to you, every word, every line, every nuance with regard to the lyric and the music is accounted for because it's the truth. And the truth is holistic. It covers all things. And this is this is the whole problem with what's going on with people struggling with so-called going to veganism. And it's so easy to explain. Um, First off, when, um, again, this all relates back to to who we are, which are frugivores and that we need to be in an alkaline state. So when you're feeling a loss of energy and a brain fog, (laughs) these are relative statements. These are relative statements being spoken to you by by junkies, junkies who are addicted to um, essentially um, uh, processed food. And this this is really where I want the, the conversation to go today. Santos knows this inside and out as well. Um, our you know the next show, show that we do with Josh X will will go over this perfectly as well. But in in life, as we talked about, there's either red shift, blue shift. There's either right or wrong. There's either alkaline or acidic. Acidic is death. Alkalinity is life. The same applies to every single aspect of of our reality, every single aspect. And in so-called food, there are two types of food. One is actually a food and the other is not a food, but it's called a food. And it's the same thing like talking about, Santos is talking about, um, you know, uh, the inner ejaculation, which which is the white tantric sex that Colleen and I practice and would never either of us ever consider going near an orgasm again because of the energy and the enlightenment and the, the just the, the genius that it, it brings. Um, it, it's incredible, but it's all relating back to to the heart of all things, which is. Uh, life or death. And in this physical realm, you're either living or you're dying. There is no middle place that you can run to. There's no back eddy in a stream that you can swim to, to avoid that in the physical realm. You're either living or dying. And in with food, there's either real food or there's fake food. 
And when you go to a supermarket, that's all that they'll sell you is fake food. When you look at an advertisement on a movie or a TV show, that's all they're going to show you, fake food. What's fake food? It is a construct where things like amino acids um, and um, it, it's, you know, essential oils that are all naturally occurring within the human body are being replicated in a laboratory. Not the alchemical laboratory of the mind, but a physical laboratory that is owned by General Mills. And if you think that General Mills has, has anything on their mind other than owning you, then you need to wake up. It's like the food and drink version of Big Pharma. It, it's exactly right. And, and you, hear, you hear that line from the, these um, people suffering from massive cognitive dissonance, and they'll use that about the vegan agenda. Oh, my God. There have to be at least half of your listeners right now that, that are haranguing on and on about this vegan agenda. Wake up. Do you know what vegan means and what it relates to? It means alkalinity. And an alkaline uh, food is a real food created by God. That's a plant. The golden sun produces white light. It's absorbed by green plants. It turns the white light into chlorophyll. No scientist can explain to you how this is done. They'll, they'll explain the X's and O's of it, but they, they have no idea how it's actually being done. And then they'll lie to you about it. its, its ultimate um, purpose and cause. And all this is showing you is that this is green for Earth, and, and that's what we need to consume. And a plant is alive. You eat living. If you want to live, you eat life. Now, let's go back to common sense 101, people. Uh, common sense says that if you want to live, you have to live. God is the God of the living, not the dead. If you're eating death from murder to achieve life, haven't you got that backwards now? I mean, from a very simple fundamental level, haven't you got that backwards? Where is the life in dead, rotting flesh? And remember, as Santo said, and as Josh X goes, goes on and on about, because uh, it's the truth, flesh is not meat. There is no nutritional value in flesh. Flesh does not decompose within the body. That's why you have literally when they do these these different colonoscopies on on various people for various reasons uh, in the meat eating world, they will find bits and pieces of meat that has been there for decades with, within them. Charlie, I know, is, I, I know you've read my novel. Let me just throw this in there. Uh, it's a bit of a spoiler for people that haven't, but I've got the character <laughs> Neil Lowe, the, mm -hmm. the police chief. What's in a name? Neil Lowe. And uh, you may have reached the end of the book. Uh, it turns out, I'll, I'll let people know this, Neil Lowe dies of colon cancer. And the habit that he has throughout the narrative of the book is that he enjoys meat-based snacks. So his thing is he's always munching on a bag of pork scratchings or he's got a hot dog or he's got a, a burger, you know, and he ends up dying of uh, cancer of the colon. And that was just my little uh, uh, way of observing consequentialism when it comes to choice of diet, which, which I embedded into that story. And it is, by the way, folks, it, it, it is brilliant that, that this is Mark's first um, supposedly fictional novel. And, and it's brilliant. And it, 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 is a, it is a must read. It's a must have. And um, Well, I wasn't trying Mark, to get you to blow smoke up my ass again about the book. No, <laughs> I do appreciate I'm glad, the positive I'm glad that you brought it up because those things, those tips of the hat to the work of Santos and, and perhaps even a little of, of myself are, are in there. And um, but, you know, again, versus then then, you know, um, consequentialism and, and which, of course, is the way because the rewards are built into the work, whatever work you do, whether it's whether it's um, righteous or 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 flat out wrong, there are rewards built into the work. That's where your rewards come from. They don't come from the material plane 
that um, can be stolen or rust or, you know, run over by by a car tire and broken. No, no. The rewards, the everlasting rewards of your work are built into the work. So whatever you do, you're going to have those rewards. And this is just common sense. And this is just this is science at a basic level. Again, 101. Let's go back to 101. And the basic level of food is that it's either alive, real, or it's fake. And and again, you can you can espouse cognitive dissonance and run from this all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that what I'm telling you is the absolute provable truth. Food is either real and alive, created by God for free in abundance that no one can ever, ever own, grow it yourself, harvest it yourself. It's there for all eternity. It'll never go away. The sun is not a nuclear furnace that's going to blow up one day. People are lying to you about everything. It's eternal. You are eternal. And you can live eternally within the physical plane if you take this seriously. But eating a a, a slice of pizza, drinking a bottle of Coca-Cola and watching Simon says on your television is tantamount to death in every single form, both physically and metaphysically. Life is in living. Living is plants. That's where food comes from. And everything that you need is created in nature. People go on and on and on about, well, you know, you can't get vitamin B12 from a plant. I was going to raise that. Thank you. That's another common comment. Oh, uh, I'm B12 deficient because uh, I've been on a vegan diet. That's a very common comment that I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What, What a load of horseshit. First off, where did they come off calling vitamin B12 a vitamin. Do you, does anyone actually know what vitamin B12 is? If you are outside in the field and you are working away and you sit down on a, on a, a tree stump and you put your hand on that tree, somewhere on that tree, because, because of the sun and the moon, the sun is giving life and the moon is, is creating decay necessary or else we'd be, there'd be no oxygen left. We'd be overrun with, with plants and life. Balance, polarity, the, du- the infinite duality of our polarity in the physical realm. You have to have these things. So the decay that's on um, anything, so a rusting steel pipe, or the decay that's on um, the the bark of a tree. If you purposely or accidentally rub your hand on that decay, that's vitamin B12. And if you accidentally then put your hand to your mouth and a little bit contacts your saliva and goes inside of you, that's ingesting vitamin B12. If you scratch your temple, if you rub your forehead and it goes in through your pores, that's ingesting vitamin B12. That's what vitamin B12 is. So they say, the only place you can get vitamin B12 from is from from an animal. No, it's not the only place you can get it from. And the only reason you can get it from an animal is because you kill it. Did you, did, you not, did you want to start piecing the truth together and having some gnosis here, folks? Or do you want to be lied to for the rest of your existence? Vitamin B12 is decaying organism, bacteria um, on anything that is death or that is dead or is dying. That's what vitamin B12 is. Go look it up for yourself. And people say that uh, apparently B12 reserves only last about three to four years in the body. And so people <laughs> people that have tried vegan diets and they start to fail after about three years, it's because Aww. these reserves have run out. And another regular comment is, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you only last two to three years trying veganism because all the reserves that you had from your meat eating days uh, run out. They're, they're depleted in the two or three wow. years. And that's when you start getting the cravings. And that's when your body tells you that you need to go back to what you were doing before i mean i'm just passing yeah. on the comments here exactly and thank you for doing so mark and, and again folks if if you're vitamin b12 deficient and you're afraid of running out of, running out of your your um, vitamin b12 reserves go lick a tree yep there you go there you go rub go hug a tree go lick hug a drain a tree pipe. and kiss the tree and and you'll be loaded up with vitamin b12 because you see it's it's not the the random evolution of the Big Bang Theory where everything came out of nothing. This is elegant design beyond description. 
that of the creator. If you wish to call the creator God or or hocus pocus, whatever you want, it's up to you. It doesn't change the fact that it's the truth. All of this is connected to one thing. All of this is interrelated. All of this connects back home to the one thing. All of this is brilliance that we can barely even wrap our feeble minds around. Mm. And this is our reality. And either you're going to get healthy by embracing what God provides naturally, stop worrying. Again, one of the biggest things, nobody ever talks about this, but (laughs) um, wow, there's so much that I could say. But of the mind, the Bible talks And all sacred texts talk that you are two temples. You are the temple of the body, the physical material plane, and you are the temple of the mind, the metaphysical plane, red shift, blue shift. And you are, your whole purpose is to take care of your two temples. You know how you do that? Santos coined this, and I like this best. And Colleen and I have said, we're going to just stop using the term vegan altogether because like flat earth, them's fighting words because that's how organized society wants it. It's a button pusher, isn't it? It is. And so what the truth is, it's it's the Garden of Eden diet, which is beautiful because it takes us back to, to Genesis, which is the beginning. Uh, the beginning of all things, Genesis to Revelation, and and it connects human physiology together. It's what the Bible is. Bible's not is not a history book. No one in the Bible actually was there or lived. They're all allegories about you, the human body. Guess what astrology is? Guess what? Every single wandering star or star or sun and moon, everything in the night skies, it's you. It's what's inside of you. All of these things are left for you as teaching devices to teach you about the places you can't see or you can't go to within the material plane. Mm. This is the truth and this is the way so that when you eat life, when you eat foods that are living, that are green from chlorophyll, you are connecting to God's wisdom and God's truth. There, there's just no, no more accurate, simpler, or truthful way to put it than that. When you eat death by committing murder, what do you think you're give, giving to yourself by doing so? And again, we've talked about this. You can't run away from this. Do your own experiment with hydrochloric acid. Uh, drop it on anything, anything within your household and observe what occurs. Hmm. That's death. That's decay. Decay is death. You know, alkalinity is life, which is growing naturally within nature. So, all I sorry, I'll just I'll finish this, Mark, and then back over to you. And that's this. Sure. So, all these processed foods. So, you call yourself a vegan, and what do you feed your family? You feed your family a wonderful, and you make it great because you're cutting some nice uh, purple onions and you're putting fresh lettuce and you're cutting slices of tomatoes and it's beautiful, uh, all of that lovely living green stuff, green or red stuff that's on top. But what's holding the, the patty and what's in the patty? None of it is real. None of it is living. You can call it vegan all you want because it's not meat, dairy, or eggs, but it's not living. If it's not living people, there there is no value to you. You're, You're getting most of your energy from your breathing because what you're breathing is the ether, the magnetic electrical ether. That's what we are, our magnetical, magnetic electrical beings of energy. Learn the truth about Tesla and what Tesla taught. Three, six, and nine. If you understand three, six, and nine, you understand the basis of all creation. But you want to think that you're just making yourself big and strong by eating all of all of these proteins. The human body makes its own protein. Human body needs virtually no outside sources of protein. Protein is one of the biggest lies that you've ever occurred. And what's the only thing outside of the human body that can create its own protein? Plants. Where do all animals get their protein from? They eat plants. So the best that you're doing is getting half or a third or a quarter of the nutrients by eating an animal because you've created a middleman, right? Instead of going direct to source yourself and not having to buy it, you can grow it or just go to a field and and harvest it yourself for free. You're creating a middleman who charges you for the pleasure of killing you. 
And the best choice you have when you shop at a supermarket is this. And I'm not kidding. This is take this to the bank. This is the absolute truth. The best choice you get in a supermarket is this. Do you want to die slowly by spending a lot of money or do you want to die quickly from buying the cheap stuff? Because either way, if you shop at a supermarket, they're killing you because the foods that they sell, including vegan foods, are all processed foods. And processed foods are not made from one shred of living natural life. All of it is artificial from a laboratory owned by General Mills. A piece of advice that somebody gave me a while back was with regard to food products that come out of organized society, anything you see advertised on TV or in magazines or whatever, just avoid it. If it's advertised, it's to be avoided. And that goes for the latest smartphone, it goes for cosmetic products, it goes for soft drinks, it goes for alcoholic drinks, it goes for food products. You know, if it's on TV, give it a wide berth. And I think that's some pretty good advice. (laughs) It is. It's brilliant. Thank you, Mark, for sharing that. Sure. Now, one other comment that I want to address is one that, again, failed vegans often come up with, and that's that plants are living sentient beings. They claim there's studies that are done to show that they've got nervous systems and they react to stimuli and things of this nature. And therefore, there's no difference between plants and animals because they're all living and sentient. Therefore, we might as well eat animals because eating plants is no better. Uh, I'll let you take that one, Santos. Okay, so the difference is with plants, you can, like a tree, the tree doesn't die. You pick the fruit off the tree and the tree keeps living. You can't cut a, uh, a slice of bacon for your pig bum breakfast while you're drinking cafe lattes and uh, the pig continue living. The, the pig will die. You will hurt or grow a new bum. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. So... By eating plants, you are enabling the tree to continue living. You eat its fruits. And so it gives its fruits because in the Garden of Eden diet, which is fruit eating, uh, these plants knew consciously, they know consciously that they must go through to be eaten, to be transformed so that the consciousness can be purified and they can, the the plant consciousness grows as it is designed to do to enable uh, animal consciousness on this plane, which then enables human consciousness. So from the mineral to the plant, to the animal, to the human, then to the Jew or the hero in the Greek system, any other system, it's the Brahmin, the bhakti yogi, the sannyas, the mystic, uh, the hermit, they're all in that where they were sublimating the human, uh, transforming from the human to the next level to go back to cause. And that's what we're doing. This is how you sublimate things. So this is part of their process. The other thing is plants are not autonomous. They don't have faces with features as animals do. They don't have a fully developed nervous system. They don't have a heart and uh, blood and veins and circulatory system. They, they are not fully developed. They are uh, plants which are not individuals. They have it's, They come from the earth consciousness. So therefore, when you are eating from them, you're not killing them. You see, with animals, they like semi individuated and you are killing them, you know. So and if it's not for a good reason, uh, that karma goes back onto you and uh, eating them is not a good reason. You can't say and justify that your doctor said you need vitamin B, you're down and you need iron. So you've got to eat meat. You cannot karmically justify that at St. Peter's pearly gates. It's not going to fly. You lose. Why? Because. Uh, what you are practicing at the moment of your death or at the moment of your (coughs) leaving this plane, that is where you resonate. That's your frequency. That's where you will incarnate at some other plane. 
and and it will be a plane where you practice what you are practicing at the moment of your death. So this is why it's very very dangerous to be ingesting uh, to be having a blood diet. It's uh, pretty much criminal. It's pretty much criminal from the Brahmin point of view, the true Brahmin point point of view. I don't think in India these days they. Uh, they do anymore because of the Jesuit control of India, which has been unbroken since they uh, invaded India. So, but the Brahmin just, you know, it, this is gluttony. Gluttony is all about uh, eating stuff that is exceeding what is common and normal and what should be known as the human diet. Mm -hmm. Anything in, in excess of this is gluttony and gluttonies will not inherit God's kingdom. People say uh, plants have their own defences to deter predators uh, when they try and justify why plants don't want to be eaten. Yeah, that's like everything. That's a symbiotic way of, um, you know, nature working in balance. Um, if the plant doesn't protect itself, there's no immune system. Then it dies and can't propagate. So depending on the area, how much plant is needed, nature will, how much of that plant is needed, nature will balance it. It never is unbalanced. There's never an outgrowth of anything in nature ever, ever, ever. It's when humans interfere. Um, and same with the animal kingdom. You know, there's not as many elephants as there are fish. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have room to walk around. And because the elephant because of different procreation ratios. And so this is why humans really should know their diet and they should know how to ascend their vehicle. Why do you feel nature is so barbaric and cruel when you look at the way creatures eat each other and, you know, kill each other? There's some absolute horror stories in terms of the bloodbath that goes on every single day all around the world and has done for who knows how long. How do you reconcile all that violence and all that death with the idea of a loving creator? Yeah, for sure. So consciousness must break through the limitations of that um, class of being. In the human kingdom, there should this eating of each other should stop. This is where Christ consciousness um, saves the animal and makes them different to the animals and their behavior. So we do see it in the Iron Ages, as explained by the great philosophers, this will happen when animals turn on themselves as well because of things going out of balance. The evil gets, um, gets the upper hand, and what happens is certain entities that are evil uh, operate from a certain plane. It's called the dark satellite, one of the chakras of the earth. And when that dark satellite is at perihelion, uh, there's a lot of animalistic, demonic entities that incarnate into humans. And on this plane, <clears throat> and death feeds upon death. But that's, um, in the Iron Ages, that's only from the animals down. So in the better ages, there's a different, different law system. You know, it's a more advanced law system where Things don't have to be so brutal. There will probably be a little bit of brutality, but it will be so subtle, you know. But that's how the consciousness advances. That pain and torture of being eaten and devoured, it's only, it's only fleeting, you know. It really is in the grand scheme of things. And once the death occurs, then the release of that consciousness from that murdered animal is advanced. So it is a... A very brutal way for consciousness to keep progressing through the four kingdoms. Sure is. And in the Iron Age, it's brutal, you know, and that's where the scriptures are literalized. It's where, you know, uh, <clears throat> people are trafficked. It's it's very sad, uh, but only only the demonic frequencies uh, that are in, in discord with the high frequencies that are that are allowed to uh, somehow advance us through experiences of what we don't want is allowed to happen and it has advanced us it has hurt us and, and made us awaken you see 
How, how about this one, which I've heard certain spiritual gurus put forward? Animals at a soul level recognize that humans are more advanced beings than them. And so they willingly give their bodies up for us to eat them because they recognize that we need them. I'm not saying I go along with this. I'm saying it's a comment that uh, certain people have espoused. So the idea is that animals don't actually <laughs> mind being killed. They, they, they give themselves up to help us. Well, that may, that may actually be true in some cases, but it's not, not the, the norm. That's not how it works. Well, it seems to be being used as justification for continuing to eat meat. So exactly. people seem, seem to be saying, oh, cows don't mind going to abattoirs to be turned into burgers. It's, it's fine. Yeah, well, that's ridiculous, isn't it? You see, that's just like a sweeping blanket statement, which is totally how you um, really don't ever learn the truth of, of absolute truth of reality, but just of appearances. So there may be, there may have been cases where an animal did do that, you know, where you, obviously the animal brought itself there to be sacrificed. It, it's unusual, but, you know, somehow advanced animals have a knowledge of how to, you know, uh, end their life so that they can, you know, progress. It's, it's in the spirit of consciousness of the universe. Animals are not stupid. They're conscious. They know what they're doing when they're offering their bodies. But this will be very, very rare, you know, very, very rare. And, and it's not even necessary. If it has happened, well and good, you know, we don't need to pre perpetuate that anymore, really, do we? You know, <laughs> we don't. Yeah. So one really alarming thing that I find is that a lot of these lapsed vegans seem to be taken advice from this mentally ill psychopath known as Sverige. Are you guys familiar with this character known as Sverige? No. No. Okay. So you can find his videos on YouTube. I think he's I think he's <coughs> Latvian actually, even though Sverige means Swedish. Uh, he is a guy who claims that he tried veganism. It didn't work out for him. He got very ill. He went back to eating meat, restored his health, and now he advocates that a meat-based diet is the way to go and vegans are harming themselves and they're harming their children if they raise them that way and they're self-haters. And his trick, uh, his stunt, is he turns up at vegan events and festivals and stuff uh, chewing on a leg of lamb or uh, eating some raw meat. He advocates cannibalism he advocates blood drinking he advocates eating raw meat uh, this is why i call him mentally ill uh, and he's got a, an associate known as milk jar and i've heard the two of them in debates with vegans where sverage mm -hmm. insists that uh eating meat is the way to go and just so many people that have lapsed from following a plant-based diet seem to be listening to sverage and the arguments he puts forward and he's got these videos on youtube where there's all these weak emaciated people and he claims that they're all former vegans and their hair's falling out their teeth's falling out and all this and you know he, he offers that as evidence that this is not the way to go i just wondered if you'd come across this guy because he seems to be treated as some kind of guru by uh, in certain quarters you know mark it, it all just comes back down to what we talked about at the top of the show which is syncretism and and the seeking of the one truth the one thing that all emanates from within which you know is the realm of god this is left brain versus right brain. And why do so many people um, in this reality uh, find people like that? Why do people like that have have so many followers? Look at the truth community itself, Mark. Look at the, the, the biggest truthers that are out there and um, look at their views on, on things like um, a raw diet versus a, a cooked animal flesh diet. Um, those, those that side with destruction, with, with murder and death, they have the highest, by far the highest amount of subscribers and they're treated as, as geniuses. Those that, um, exist out of the right hemisphere of the brain through, through love, through sacri self-sacrifice, through the giving, um, uh, to all life. Uh, are the one with the, the smallest amount because it is a perfect mere reflection of what's going on within us. It, it's a perfect barometer for what's happening with regard to society. And how could it not be the case when where, where do what 90, 95, 99 percent of all people on this this perfect earth live? They live in organized cities. 
If you live in a city, you live in death and destruction on purpose. There's no reason for you to live in a city at all. You've been lied to. You've been tricked. And they'll tell you that these grandiose cities have existed forever. They haven't. Like Santos teaches, so many others um, uh, teach us again and again, strip back the lies, strip back the veneer that they built around us over the last 100, 150 years. And immediately, what do you bump into? And you bump into a group of people called the Aryans. In this case, the Tartarians, but they're, they're the Aryans, which, which are the Jews, one who, one who seeks for God by going within. These are righteous, virtuous people, those who follow the straight and narrow path of the seven heavenly virtues versus the, the wide path that leads to destruction through the seven deadly sins. It's, it's that simple. We go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, Genesis, and it takes us all the way back to Cain and Abel, left brain, right brain. And all of this is all about Saturn. Mm -hmm. Saturn is the son of the sun. The sun is Jupiter. The son of Jupiter is Zeus. Another nom de plume for, for Zeus is, is Saturn. So Jew Zeus, Jupiter Zeus, Jew Zeus is Jesus created by the Romans. Um, and, and this is the storyline of a metaphor for the chrism oil within us to a literal flesh and blood person known as Jesus Christ. There was no one by the name of Jesus and his friends, Pablo, Pablo and um, Juan and Juan and Rafael running around the Holy Land, um, you know, yeah, eating tacos 2000 years ago. So um, they're, they're lying to you and that they're lying to you at the, the most basic, basic level. This all goes back to, again, um, life or death, alkalinity versus acidity, uh, left brain versus right brain. So all that's happening with people who live in the cities, they are bombarded nonstop from the moment they are born with lies and with horrific sounds, with horrific tales, with horrific rituals. That's all it is, right? Like, like murdering living animals who are there to befriend us, to teach us to become part of our family. That's that's the history. Go back 150 years with the Tartarians, the Aryans. That's that's it. They didn't kill their animals. They were their friends. They were their family. They they lived with them. They helped them. And this is this is what we do. You don't you don't kill your family, but we have been bombarded for 150 years of lies. And now you just take this au fait accompli. And and so to prove it, you you'll read a history book. Well, who the who the hell writes all the history books now? All the all the literature. And where are you going to get your history books? Well, I want to get a good one, so I get it from the New York Times bestsellers list. The lies, lies. You don't get on the New York Times bestseller list unless unless you write lies. So that's the, that's our reality. It, again, it goes back to this truth. Gnosis, knowing something versus believing in something. This is the same thing. Left brain, right brain. People who believe in shit are left brainers. People who know stuff and are connected, therefore, to, to the, you know, the Garden of Eden diet and, and the creation within, which is God. Right brain. It, it all comes back to this simple metaphor. Everything is a teaching tool to tell you commonsensically who you are and what you're supposed to do. All you need to do is understand that you are a frugivore. If you're a frugivore, you need to be alkaline. How do you get alkalinity? Raw foods, in particular fruits, but you can have vegetables as well. But raw, soon as you cook your foods, people, and again, your money's tight, you live in a city, you're in a hurry. So what do you do when you cook? You buy the cheapest oil because you don't have a lot of extra money. And then you're always in a hurry, time, 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 right? This is the false Saturn, Saturn who wears the crown of Kronos instead of the crown of the seven chakra uh, which is which is via meditation raising the kundalini within you, becoming the enlightened man. That's the purple crown that we're supposed to wear. That's Saturn as Jesus Christ. The wrong Saturn down in the Muladhara chakra, the root or base of our torso, that is Satan. And Satan wears the crown of Kronos. Kronos means crown. It does not mean time. Kronos ruled. Through the invention of this is all he didn't exist. This is an allegory, but he he ruled over the many with this creation of linear 
time. And the linear time gets you running around from point A to point B, and you gotta hurry because the, the clock never stops ticking. That's the lie, that's the false crown, that's the wrong Saturn. That's The Bible says, uh, Revelations 13, 18, uh, the mark of a beast or that of a man. And the number of a man, his number is 600, three score and six, 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 six. It's not evil. It's not saying that that is remotely, but it's a choice. You're a beast who lives wearing the crown of Kronos. That's the wrong Saturn. That's the, the beast within you. And that is the evil 666. But the goodly righteous 666 is Jesus Christ who exists above you at the crown of your, your skull with the purple crown and the purple reign is, is the enlightened man. So that's why the Bible says the mark of a beast or that of a man. It's your choice. Which crown do you wear? The metaphysical crown achieved by going within via meditation, the purple crown or the crown of Kronos. So here's the deal. If you wear the crown of Kronos and you live by linear time, this false construct of linear time, you're in a hurry. So now you're cooking your food because somebody told you to. Why do you cook your food? Because it tastes good. Oh yeah? Well, uh, I eat mangoes and apples and oranges all the time. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing. If you try to cook them, they're, they're terrible. It's just what you get used to. It's what you're used to. And again, you're told to do things. What are we great at? Being told what to do. That's, that's no longer the individual. That, that's the, the, the sheep being led to slaughter. You have to think for yourself and you have to become an individual. And so what we do is eat what is created for us naturally for free. And that is raw. And you cook your food. You're in a hurry. You use shitty oils on high heat because you're in a hurry. Cook, 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 cook. You can take the most beautiful zucchini fresh from an organic market. You can take the most incredible uh, sweet potato. Uh, that, again, is very alkaline. All of these these things that are very, very alkaline, as soon as you cook them at high temperatures in low-grade oils, guess what? You drop their alkalinity by two, three, four points. So you're now dropping them from, say, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, all the way down to three and a half or four highly, massively acidic substances. So once again, when you listen, Mark, to all these people that are telling you, I tried to be a vegan and I and you know it didn't work for me and I got sick of it, they're all doing it wrong. They're all doing it wrong. And when you look on YouTube for for videos about vegan foods and vegan recipes, what are they all showing you to do? The most common YouTube video on vegan is making a New Orleans, the the heart of the, the Moladara, the, the root based chakra life. Um, and they're all talking about making this Louisiana, New Orleans, triple decker, vegan burger. OK, so the bun is all dead. Flour is dead and it rises with yeast. Yeast is acid and it's cancer. So whatever cancer is just hyper acid uh, acidity. But, you know, people resonate with the term cancer. So. You eat, you eat uh, your bun for your vegan meal, you're killing yourself. It's not real food, it's all fake dead food and you're killing yourself. Then what's, what's the actual vegan burger made of? Processed foods, a lot of, lot of flour in it, um, a lot of Monsanto crops, hmm. and all of this stuff is, is acidic, not alkaline, and then it's all processed, so it drops the alkalinity even further into acidity. And then what do you need to do with all of this food? They sell it to you frozen. So what do you got to do? You got to heat it up. As soon as you heat it up, you drop the alkalinity even further. And now you're eating a death burger. But hey, it says vegan. I must be doing something right. But you're not. Well, this is one of the other comments that you frequently hear and i do happen to agree with this one when people point out that there's an obvious social engineering agenda going on to coerce people towards adopting a vegan diet but on the terms of certain corporations that are putting out meat substitute products so now exactly. you can get you can get fake burgers fake bacon fake 
hot yep. dog sausages. And the idea is it weans people off of the real meat products if they're trying to become vegan. And so it looks like the original product and even tastes like it, but you're getting onto a plant-based diet. But it's a question of what's going into this stuff, as you've just pointed out. And people have rightfully observed that when you've got the likes of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and celebrities like Beyonce of To the Left, To the Left fame, you'll like that one, Charlie, uh, from that song, and Jay-Z, and you've got the actor Joaquin Phoenix and all these other celebrities uh, endorsing veganism and trying to get people to go over to it, there's something going on here. So it's, it's absolutely correct to identify an agenda. Uh, so... You know, what, what's yes. the idea here? Because it, it can't well, be about compassion. It can't be because these corporations right. care about animals and they want to sort of reduce suffering. So there's something else going on. OK, can I just quickly jump back in with this and we'll pass it over to Santo. I'll sure. just quickly because this this is the heart of it. How do you how do you defame the truth by giving you uh, the truth in the hands of the evildoers? And they are so confident in human habits and in in their marketing machine to teach you, to tell you how to act, how to live, what to do, that they're absolutely confident in handing out this truth of truth, truths with veganism, because you'll do the wrong veganism, because nobody's there to teach you the right veganism. Once again, if you understand that you're a frugivore, you eat raw fruits and vegetables. That's what we are. And when you do that, like Colleen and I do, like Santos does, you are healthy beyond belief. Your energy level is is incredible. Um, and all of your systems are regenerating themselves and you just keep going and going and going and you don't look old, you don't look terrible. You you just and and if if you have a few issues along the way, remember, you're poisoned yourself for 50 or 60 years and it's going to perhaps take a little time to get all these things out of you. But that's what they're doing, Mark. So, again, it has to be an agenda because now Bill Nye, the fucking lying guy, is on the side of veganism. And so are Beyonce and Jay-Z. Um, again, what are they going to give you? They're going to give you Bill Gates brand, which, by the way, I believe it's called Impossible Foods, Impossible truth in plain sight, impossible foods is the it is this uh, R- uh, Richard Branson, Bill Gates company that's selling you Soylent Green, the movie Soylent Green. What was in Soylent Green? Human beings. we got to get rid of them somehow. Soylent Green. Soya. Soya Lent. Soya, Soya Green. Soya Lentils. Soya and lentils. That's right. Hey, but Mark, I, I you know, uh, how uh, I, this vegan thing doesn't work. I was cooking my, that's right. You were cooking your lentils. That's right. High heat, rapidly putting them into a burger, putting that burger into a pan at high heat with shitty oil and frying it up, frying it up, driving that pH value of your litmus paper down and down and down. That's where it goes. When you eat alkaline foods on your litmus paper, it goes up and up and up. And what are the colors of the litmus paper when you go from the middle, which is green, by the way, homeostasis balance, the earth, mother earth, green. When you go up, what are the colors? The colors are blue to purple. Blue, sixth chakra, the third eye chakra, Ajna, and the seventh crown chakra within us purple six and seven those are the exact same colors of the of litmus paper in the ph scale when you eat acidity what are the colors i'm not making this stuff up you go down when you have acidity you go down instead of ascending you descend on litmus paper what are the colors on litmus paper when you ingest acid red 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 and where are you going to hell, the fiery flames of hell. It's your choice. Do you want to be Saturn wearing the crown of Jesus Christ, the purple, the purple crown via going within and meditation, or do you want to live an acidic uh, a life? And I'll just quickly interject this and let you guys run with it if you like. The coronavirus, the coronavirus. Do you know that that's an anagram? Do you know that every single letter in the in the one word they've turned they've created this as a one word uh, phenomenon this coronavirus it spells the word carnivorous they're telling you in plain sight what is wrong with humanity 
we have become carnivores in every aspect of our lives. That is incredible. And when you see that term rendered in newspaper reports and mainstream news reports, you're right. It's all expressed as one word, not two words, coronavirus. And it's an exact anagram of carnivorous, as you say. Yep. Yep. So it seems like the sick controllers want to have their cake and eat it because whether we're all eating meat or eating a load of synthetic crap, they're still winning either way, right? Yeah, so with coronavirus, corona is the coroner, and the coroner is the one who wears the crown, Kronos, Saturn, Satan. So it's Satan's virus. They're telling you, corona is his, only the coronado, the crown one, Saturn, can have that title. No one else has that title. So it's the coroner, you know, and he's knocking, the Grim Reaper is knocking on the on the doors. And, and basically it's just people who... Uh, who are gullible enough to um, to buy into it? You know, that's that's who it's going to actually affect. It's going to paralyze them. You know, because in a spiritual sense, because they are believing, you know, in rumors and rumors of wars and and uh, ghosts, really. You know, stories. And so, uh, same with people who have been on the on the path. They've been vegetarians and vegans and then uh, failed and then blaming the diet rather than looking for blame at themselves. It's typical of people who fail. Like if you were doing nine years of uh, tertiary education to get your bachelorate in you know, brain surgery or something like this, you don't want you don't want to be lazy during those nine months and, and fail and then you know blame the university and say oh you know you can't um, you know you can't graduate from that university it's it's rigged you know <laughs> um, it's it's a dud university no you, the blame's on you if you don't have the goods and you're not doing the right thing then you cannot blame that thing you know a bad workman blames his tools. And so you have to look at yourself and be honest and be fair. And you've got to be able to judge, uh, not judge a fish by how well it climbs a tree. A lot of people like to point to vegans that are skinny. Oh, but you don't look good, Santos. You need a burger, you know. Um, you're not looking very healthy. Well, I'm feeling pretty healthy, I'm telling you. The only thing that troubles me is the itch which I have been sharing publicly for a long time now, which I believe is like a, a frequency uh, AI uh, due um, smart nanobot technology uh, uh, effects that I'm suffering. I'm pretty sure of it because I've been doing many, many protocols to get rid of this and gone to shamans and healers alike. I'm in Mexico going to hundreds of them and not... The only thing I can get is I've got heavy metal poisoning in uh, in my body, um, and it's liquid. That's what they've come up with, one shaman. So, uh, but apart from that, I know that my life transformed when I became a vegan. So I, I know how great this diet is. It is the only diet. Thank you, Porphyry and Yamblichus, great Neoplatonists. Pythagoreans, vegetarians, all of them, the Neoplatonists, all vegetarian. Why? Because they knew that you cannot ascend when you are eating flesh. You can't do that. It's not going to happen. It's murderous. And it's obvious that you cannot ascend. You will be uh, – and as for that um, that guy who eats flesh, uh, that Danish guy or whatever, yeah, I have – Sverich, yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've heard of this uh, degenerate. He is he's a barbarian. He's a, he's a bloodlust glutton, and, and he's perishing in hell already for his deceptions. Well, he was once hospitalised for eating contaminated raw bone marrow. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a demon. He has so many demons, he's possessed by vicious, demonic, murderous, bloodlust, gluttonous demons. And you can see he's demonized. He's a moron. He's, he's, he's a degenerate. He is deliberately and willfully misleading people. And he's satanic and he's ugly and he's very, very stupid. He thinks he's smart. 
The man is so stupid. I would love to have a, a debate with him. With if if anyone, I don't like debating, but if anyone, I would love to with this left hand path satanic demon worshiping thug that he can even think that he can just keep taking murdered animals and putting them in his degenerate intestines. He is a thug and he needs to be absolutely ridiculed and his panties need to be pulled down because he is exploiting animals and teaching to continue this demonic bloodlust on this earth so that we can all be murdered and eaten alive. So he's perpetuating the cult of death. Death begets death. And I have two words for that moron. If you're listening, uh, what's his name again? Sverridge. Sverridge. I'm glad I've never remembered his name, and I never will. And he will go off into perdition and be unknown forever and ever and ever. These are two words for you. Uh, corpse and bum. You're a bum eater and you're a corpse eater. That's what you are, a degenerate bug. All right. I would love to see some animals come along and uh, rip your head off and your testic testicles and burp them out and shit them out and burp and fart you out of their asses. That's what I'd like to see, a dinosaur come along and just go... go. Well, I can't imagine his life review will be much fun. Uh, his debate will be so humiliating, he will never, ever, ever make a video clip ever again if he debates with me. <laughs> Because I'll be defending the animals till the day I die, and he will be murdering them till the day he dies, forever in hell. All right. And I'm still, I'm still glad I can't remember his name. Don't repeat it. <laughs> okay. It's not worth it. Let him go unknown forever and ever and ever to his left-hand path damnation. <laughs> Sorry if I'm... To the left, kind. to the left. Yeah. All right, well, fellas, I think we've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to on this show. Uh, I'll let you just make any final comments or observations before I cut you loose. Santos, any uh, final, any final yeah. words there? Final observation is you kill, you'll be killed. Happy days to you. There it is. Charlie? Yeah, um, you know, again, that, that passage from the Bible that Santos is referring to, Revelations thirteen eighteen. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. And it's your choice. You can wear the righteous crown of Christ Jesus, or you can wear the wrongful, shameful crown of, of Satan, which is the crown of Kronos. It, there's a right and there's a wrong. We talk about this, Mark, all the time, that the physical world clearly is a polarity. For, for everything, there is an op opposite thing. And in between these polarities are infinite lines of duality. So you can choose to be slightly happy one day, mostly happy, partially happy, super happy. You can be virtually any form of happy that you want. That's the duality of the polarity of happiness. But there is such a thing as right and wrong. And right and wrong is the only thing. There are no shades of gray and there are no dualities. Something is either right or it is wrong. And if you watch, if, if you haven't done this, then you're a coward. If you haven't watched the documentary Earthlings, then you're a coward because the documentary Earthlings is simply telling you, showing you in plain sight what's going on. And the brutality is exactly what's going on because these people that are forced to do this work for commerce coin, are having to justify to themselves constantly all of the anger and all of the, the sickness and all of the illness that they feel inside and they take it out on the animals. So if, if you have a shred of decency, you'll start tonight and watch the documentary Earthlings. And if you can then, after watching that documentary, if you can then go to a supermarket the next day and buy an animal product, then you absolutely get what you deserve because the documentary Earthlings is telling you, showing you, uh, Fall McCartney said about the, you know, um, slaughterhouses with glass walls. 
there would never ever be uh, an animal food industry ever again because what they do there is degenerate is sick beyond description go ahead yeah i often said if you took a bunch of school kids on a trip to an abattoir you'd have lifelong vegans none of those kids would ever go near a piece of meat again that's exactly right mark they'd be traumatized for life that's right and and again i i don't even like to go in all of this 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 plain commonsensical gnosis about acidity versus alkalinity and it's so common sense because for me it's just a right or a wrong issue and you just don't do this you need to understand folks even if meat dairy and eggs were the greatest things in the world and they're not they're the most evil things in the world these foods because they're not real foods even if they were we would still have to stop because right now we are artificially force breeding north of a trillion sentient beings every single solar year to keep up this facade of the food industry. And this is sickening beyond belief because if the birth process gives the wrong gender of the animal, do you know what they do? Do you know what they do? Certain industries want males, certain industries want females. If they get the wrong one, do you know what they do? Start educating yourself. And if you can live with this, then you get what you deserve. The coronavirus is what humanity has become, carnivorous, because everything we do, we take. We take, take, take. They tell us with that virus that it originated in China out of some stories say bats because they put bats bats in soup. Uh, Some stories say snakes because the Chinese eat anything that fucking moves. Uh, Anything that lives, they'll quite happily eat. So even the mainstream, you know, organized society version of the story is that it originated through the Chinese eating all these fucking creatures. That's right. And that's why that's a lie. It's a lie. But they work that lie into the story because these Canaanites are charged with one thing. And that is if they're if they're not going to suffer the consequences from heaven of trying to take heaven by force, they have to put the truth in plain sight. And they're putting the truth in plain sight. The coronavirus is is all those human beings that take, take take, take, and you're raping Mother Earth. You're raping God's creation, and you're, you're not ever giving anything back. And, and I'll, I'll just end my little diatribe with this. Kaliwag and I live, live here in the wilderness of, of Mexico, and uh, we didn't have any plan, but we just did because there was a massive need for it. So we, we rescue abandoned and injured animals and we nurse them back to health and nobody wants them that's okay they're our family we love them so our family has now grown north of 45 animals and they're they're our our children we love them as our children everyone in our household is healthy everyone in our household is vegan so there there's no death pellets anywhere it's it's all the workload sees me having to make my version of their food. Uh, Kaliwag does her share and I do mine. I, my, my, my food that I make for them, it has to be done twice a day. So I'm up, uh, people are always, Charlie, please give us more content on Freak Seed, another podcast that's been so long, more, more videos. I'm up till one, two in the morning, finishing the, the second batch of food for when they get up in the morning, which comes early. So if I'm at bed at two or three, I still have to get up at six for all the animals, the horses and and everything else in and outside the house. Now, all we do on Freak Sense TV is teach the holistic truth. Whatever whatever we say is is provable because it explains all things. We're not we don't we don't try to sell you bits and pieces. We tell you we got twenty four hundred subscribers. And we do ask people out of the kindness of their heart, you're, you're one of them. Once again, uh, this is the man, Mark Devlin, who sent a copy of his brilliant book to, to us for free, shipped it halfway across the vast plain to get it to us on his own dime. And Mark supports us every single month with his 
unbelievably hard-earned fake money. And that's the kind of guy Mark Devlin is. And we have 26 supporters on Patreon. So we got 2,400 subscribers on YouTube. We teach nothing but the whole truth, the truth, truth, nothing but the whole truth. And we got 26 patrons on, uh, patrons on Patreon. That's a reflection, a perfect mirror image reflection of the world that we live in. And if things are going to change, the change has to start within you. If you cannot, for the sake of all life, cut the the um, murder and the captivity and the terror torture of animals out of your diet, just for the goodness of your heart, let alone anything else, then how are we ever going to get out of this mess? How are we ever going to ascend to a better world? And I, I submit that we never ever will until such time that we go within, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we start doing the work. And I'll, I'll leave, leave all of that on that note, Mark. All right, Charlie, thanks for coming on today. This is just for I'm picking up vibrations. I'm picking up vibrations. I'm picking up vibrations.